Hi, my name is George Mount with Enterprise DNA, and in this presentation, we're going to look at the chi-square test using Excel. Uh, so the idea here, particularly the chi-square test of independence, we have two categorical variables, and we want to find out if there's any kind of relationship between those variables. Uh, so we're going to be using the hypothesis testing framework. If you're not familiar with that, I would check out Advancing Into Analytics. As the author, I hope I'm not too biased, but if you're looking to get into some more advanced analytics techniques using Excel and then moving into R and Python, it, it's a good one to check out. Okay, so let's move into our demo. We're obviously gonna be using Excel. Now, basically what we need to do is get our actual values and then compare them to what's called the expected values, okay? Uh, so we're gonna use the pivot table to prepare our actual, then we're gonna use formulas for the expected. Then we're going to check at the 95% uh, significance level. And if you're not familiar with that, you can check out the book. But we want to know, is there a relationship between air conditioning and preferred area? So this is a housing data set. And we want to know, uh, does there seem to be any kind of relationship between uh, having AC and being in a preferred area of this town, which I believe was denoted by what neighborhood it, it's in. Okay, so you'll have the data set available. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Excel and we will try this out. All right, so here I am in the data. Now again, th these are housing prices and this is coming from the Journal of Applied Econometrics. What we're gonna do is insert a pivot table because basically what I wanna do is we have an ID, this is an index column. We can use this index column to count observations. So we're gonna click okay. And now what I can do is I'm gonna put town of ID here. So we know these are all unique values, so we're gonna count those unique values. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is put a preferred area on my columns, and then I'm gonna put uh, air conditioning on the rows. Okay, so here are our actual values. So we've got 546 observations of those 298 are neither air conditioning nor preferred area, 53 are both, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so here's what I wanna do. Here are my actual values. I wanna compare these to the expected values. So the way I'm gonna do this is, let me actually just, I'm gonna copy this, and I'm gonna paste it, and you'll see why here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up with my expected values. So I could even label this, I'm gonna put actual, and then we'll do expected. And basically what's happening here is I want to come up with the expected values. Now these are essentially what we would expect do just to random chance. So what I mean by that is if I do D5 times V7 divided by D7. Okay, so we have an error there because I didn't type that right. Okay, so here's our first value. Okay, here I'm going to do D5 times C7 divided by B7. I think it's D7. Okay, so uh, now let's come down here. We're gonna do D6 times B7. We're gonna do that by D7. And then we got one more here. We will do D6 times C7 divided by D7, all right. Okay, so we can see here from the status bar that this sums to 546. Now basically what I'm doing here is just by pure random chance, we know that uh, there are 546 values. We know that 373 of them in total uh, don't have, I believe the columns are uh, preferred area. We know also for example, I think I was on this one, that however many of these don't have air conditioning and vice versa. So basically what we're doing here, I think I was actually here, is just taking from random chance based on these totals, we would expect this to be 285, it's actually 298. So is there any relationship between, right, do these values tend to move together in a way, right? The no's and the no's, the yeses and the yeses, et cetera. That's what we're doing here. So here's our actual, here's our expected, uh, and then we can find the significance. And I'm gonna do chi-square 
test. It's going to ask us for our actual range. Uh, and then it's going to ask us for our expected range. And then it's going to give us a p-value of 0 0.006. So this is a very small number. So basically what we're finding here is that it's not likely that this is just a fluke. Okay, that there does seem to be some relationship between the preferred area variable and the air conditioning variable. Okay, so let's recap here. So this is pretty common of a technique, especially when we get into things like A-B testing. Uh, so basically, if you can imagine, you change something on a web page, you split uh, your audience by group, and you want to know, is there a difference in conversion based on uh, the, the difference on that web page or something. So that would be an example of an A-B test. Uh, so it's a very strong, very common technique. One thing you want to think about is that when we do this, the C observations do need to be independent. So uh, we can't have a, a user, for example, on one version of the page and then the other. Or we can't have a house that has air conditioning and also doesn't have air conditioning. So your data, uh, your observations need to be independent. Also, in our example, we were looking at two binary variables, which, which is a specific type of categorical variable. Um, we could have multiple categories, right? Uh, we could have every individual neighborhood. We could have uh, the color of the siding of the house, right? A lot of different things. So it can get tricky when we've got a lot of categories. So just, that's just something to be aware of. Okay, so that is it for the chi-square test. I hope that this is something that you can use, whether it's an A-B testing, whether it's in Excel or some other program, R and Python can, can handle this very well too. So thanks for tuning in and hope to see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.